Hi, this is Steve Caldwell, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Bone MIDI Translator Pro so you can use your MIDI controller to change channel routing. This can be useful if you want to reroute to different channels or output devices during a live performance. It can also be useful in quickly assigning your output to different channels in your digital audio workstation software. Shown here is what I'm going to do today. I will take both performance and control information from a global channel and redirect it to one or both of my assigned channels using a controller value. Bone MIDI Translator Pro will use global variables set by the controllers to determine whether the output of a given channel will be enabled or disabled. I use channel 12 as my global channel here, however you could use any unused MIDI channel as a global channel. You can also use a different MIDI controller for keyboard and control functions if you would like, however I decided for demonstration purposes to keep it simple and use the same input device for both. In this example I will route outputs to alias devices I call Synth1 and Synth2. They are simply virtual output ports in this example. So first I open my template project that I've created previously, and I can make that available to you. I'm going to set my input device and then my output device is I'm going to call Synth1 and I'm going to assign that to a Bone MIDI Translator 2 virtual port and then I'm going to create another alias for Synth2 and make that the next port now I'll set up my uh, global variables that I'm going to use and first I'll set uh, GA to my global channel number that I'm going to use for input and uh, that'll uh, be GA is 11 which is cha MIDI channel 12 and then we'll set up uh, to enable both of the uh, output channels that we'll be using so G1 will control uh, output channel 1 and G2 variable will control output MIDI channel 2 and we'll use the controllers 1 and 2 for that now let's go ahead and just save our project out so that I don't overwrite the template. Now I'm going to rename my uh, work preset to what it's actually going to do in this project. We'll call that control. And we'll set up our translators that are going to be able to enable and disable the various channels. So we'll use the control channel 1. That will be a control message. Uh, we'll be using the global channel which I had defined as GA here and the value that will the controller number we're going to use is controller number one and it can be any valuable uh, any value and we'll set the value to PP and then uh, down here we'll go ahead and uh, set the value based on the control channel G1 equals PP and now I'll duplicate this and do the same thing for channel 2 so the only thing we need to do is change a few things we're going to use the control value or the controller number 2 and we'll set the val control variable to, to the incoming value now let's go ahead and add a preset for uh, managing the performance or the out actual output value we'll uh, add a translator and uh, call that channel 1 performance and for the input we're going to use a raw MIDI message because we're going to manipulate some of these values so PPQQRR is the MIDI message and then we'll go ahead and set up the rules for this particular translator we'll put them right here uh, so this establishes the channel mask first of all to make sure we're only looking at the channel portion of the incoming MIDI message. We're going to see if the channel for the incoming message is 12. If it's not, we're going to skip out going action and, and exit the rules. Uh, then we'll check and see if this particular channel is enabled. If it's enabled, or if it's not enabled, we'll skip the rules again. And then uh, we're going to look and see if it's a note on message. And if it's a note on message, uh, then we'll move forward and we'll look and see if it's a note off message 
and if it's a note off message we'll also move forward but if it's neither of those two then we're not going to do anything with it and we're going to exit the rules and not do an outgoing action so if we make it here then uh, we know that uh, we're going to do something with this particular translator so we just need to make sure we get the channel set up and then we'll output the uh, final MIDI value so in this case, uh, we're going to ex exit rules, ex uh, execute outgoing action, and we really didn't have to change anything other than the outgoing action is uh, now going to be um, a MIDI message. And we need to make sure it's raw MIDI message again. And it should be UU because what we did is change the value of PP to make the outgoing channel. Everything else is the same. Now we'll do the same thing for channel 2 performance. Uh, but we need to change a few of the rules. Because this is on a different channel and a different controller. The incoming message is the same. I'm going to go ahead and fix uh, my title here. So let's go over and look at the rules. And I will... Uh, go through these rules again they're almost identical but there's a few extra things we need to do so I'm just gonna start typing here and uh, again this we're establishing the channel mask so this is the same as before and then we check for the uh, global channel and make sure it's coming in on the global channel this is the same as before and uh, then we look and see if the channel is enabled. Here we use G2, so we're using the different channel to see if it's enabled. And then uh, if it is enabled, we're going to go ahead and go through, do the uh, note on and note off processing that we did before. We set the mask, we look for a note on. If uh, it's a note on, then we skip the next two rules. If, then we look for a note off. And if it's a note off, well, we skip the next rule, and if it's neither, we're going to go ahead and exit the translator. However, if it is one of those two, then we need to make sure we add the note on, note off message to the uh, mask with the channel that we want it to go out to. So this time we change it and or it with the number one so that we go uh, going out to channel two, and then we exit the rules execute the outgoing action and the outgoing action remains the same in this case. Now we use the keyboard and we're going to go ahead and first of all do an initialization of the variables to make sure everything's enabled. I'll bring up uh, the keyboard uh, that I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and hit a key and you'll notice that it's going out to both of the channels that we've defined. And if I move controller 0 or controller 2 to 0 and cl click a key, it only goes out to 1. And if I take them both to 0 and click a key, it doesn't go out and only comes in. And again, if I re-enable these by making controller 1 and 2 something else other than 0, then it goes out again. So again, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. And if you have any questions, feel free to go to www.bohm.com.